What's going on, everyone? I'm your host, Jim O'Neill, the Midwest Outdoors podcast brought to you by Fish Daddy. And speaking of Fish Daddy, it's been exactly a year since we made them our title sponsor before the creation of this podcast. All the brains, all the pre-work happened right here at iCast. So a year later, here we are. We're on our 21st episode and it's the same iCast but a new year. We're gonna to talk to some of the biggest pros in the industry. We're gonna to talk to different manufacturers of products, different companies that are coming out with innovative ideas. And I can't wait. All of this is located right inside of this building. Thanks to the American Sports Fishing Association, we get to have this event where for four days, like-minded people across the industry get together from salt and fresh, from Europe, Asia, and America, we all meet here and go over lures, tactics, marketing, sales, and how to catch fish and having a good time doing it. So if this is an episode that you guys are waiting for, let's get inside because we're not doing the news, we're not doing tournament coverage, we're just talking iCast today. Come on guys. Well, here we are on the show floor of the 2024 iCast. And if you aren't familiar with iCast, that's all right. Let's inform you a little bit. iCast is the largest fishing trade show in the world with almost a thousand vendor booths and 15,000 people all under the same roof to talk about the same thing. And that is fishing. Whether it's fly fishing, ice fishing, freshwater or saltwater, it's a bunch of like-minded people talking about what's new for the industry next year. And we all get to take first looks at boats, tackle, lures, rods and reels, all of that's coming to the market this fall or winter. And there is really no better way to start a whole week talking about fishing than with a bass tournament. ICAST kicks off with the ICAST Cup. And I was fortunate enough to fish it for the first time and was paired with the PowerPole team. I was paired with Lucas and Alex from PowerPole HQ. And it was a four hour tournament with three fish format. Now, we did have a respectable showing. We weighed in a little over 10 pounds and had an 11 place finish. And a huge factor to catching our fish was our stealthy approach to each grass mat. The new move trolling motor was strong and cut through tons of grass, yet super silent when approaching those grass mats. We caught multiple fish within 10 or 15 feet of the boat, which was impressive, including this big one right here that I lost that could have put us in the top five, but hey, that's fishing, especially when with a frog. Now, the cool thing was we were able to hit these mats and have these bites because of the quiet move. Now, not only was the move quiet and effective in catching those fish close to the boat, but it had some other features about it that I found truly impressive. First of all, it's wireless and can be controlled in three different ways. One is the wireless foot pedal. Two is the wireless remotes that, by the way, you can charge on the boat while you're using it. And third was the power pole app. And that's the first time I've ever seen a, a trolling motor being able to be controlled by an app. The power poles also were influential, the staple of power pole, of course. All in all, the iCast Cup was an event that I would highly encourage anyone who gets the chance to fish. Between big blowups, seeing airboats, and the occasional alligator, it was an unforgettable time. Shout out to the winners, CPF Lures. They had three bass for 15 pounds, seven ounces, all caught on 10 inch worms. And also a huge congrats to Nicole Abrams and Julie Levitt for being the highest finishing women's team. And that qualifies them as the US representatives for next year's Pan American Black Bass Championship. So go get it girls and win us a gold. I have had one heck of a week. It has been exhausting. It has been a thrill. It's been a little too much fun till the wee hours in the morning, but we're talking business, we're talking fishing, and we're happy to be here. And who do we have right here? Guys, you want to introduce yourself? My name is Luke Yeager. I'm uh, from Hunter County, New Jersey, and this is uh, Vince, Vince Fishing. 
Vince fishing. Yep. And uh, what do you guys do? You know, where are you at? Um, some of us might recognize your face, a lot may not. Me and Luke here, we've uh, been filming together. We went to high school together and uh, we've been filming for the past couple years. I started, I'm, I just turned 18. I started filming uh, YouTube fishing videos and everything back when I was 12, you know, looking up to the, the older guys doing it. I never thought, you know, I'd be in this position. I'm grateful for it. But uh, we uh, we film a bunch of different stuff. Like I was just explaining before what we do, um, a lot of my videos aren't just fishing videos. There's interactions with people, whether it's, you know, getting kicked out of places or some of our more uh, wholesome videos, a lot of people like to say is, uh, asking permission to fish on people's uh, private property. We have a lot of farmland back in Jersey, like Luke said, and uh, we go up and we ask people to fish on their property. And uh, a lot of times it's, you know, older folks and they, uh, they, uh, they love letting us fish and everyone enjoys the interaction. So that's a lot of our content. And what's interesting about that is that um, a lot of times fishermen get a bad rep because they don't ask permission. And what happens is that makes other fishermen, you know, look bad. So what we're trying to do is set an example for the youth because a lot of our subscribers and followers are younger, younger men, and we want them to not get in trouble. Uh, they don't want. We, we we do not condone trespassing, even though we do it sometimes. We condone asking permission, gaining a relationship with possible homeowner, you know, homeowners and stuff like that. And a lot of the times, private ponds have giant fish. That's why people trespass. But it's better to just get permission. So I'm from Chicago, all right, and we have this big old lake called Lake Michigan there, okay. And there's plenty of fish there, there's a lot of bass there, but it's a big city, right? So there's not a whole lot of water. There's no, we don't have giant lakes like they have, you know, in Alabama and Texas and stuff. So you know what, you know how I learned to fish? Retention ponds, you know? Yep, you knew you knew about 30 minutes after that rainstorm ended, you went to that, to that hubcap that's pumping water out, you flick that jig or worm in there, ding! Five pounder, five pounder. Oh yeah, man, five yonders all day. Don't even get me started on the golf course ponds. Mm -hmm. See, golf courses is where Vincent and I specialize. <laughs> because yes, yes, we do ask permission, except when it comes to golf courses. <laughs> yeah, we've actually, uh, we've been fishing this golf course the last couple months. Oh my God. Let's just say it's been crazy. See, a lot of you guys watching might, might be down here from, you know, living in the South. We're from Jersey. There's a difference. There's a difference between the the bass fishing down here and the northern strain bass up in Jersey. They don't get too big. You should see a lot of my buddies that live in Florida. Shout out Alexis. All week he's been getting on me. I hooked like a three pounder, two and a half, three pounder, nice solid fish. And he's like, dude, it's a what? He's, he's like, what are you getting excited about? I'm like, bro, where I come from, this is a good fish. When I was younger, this was a giant. Like you don't understand that. You grew up catching five and six pounders whenever you wanted. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I would imagine, you know, like in Illinois, I believe um, our standard size largemouth, you know, before it gets caught to eat, to eaten or just dies, whatever, is like two and a half pounds. Like that's the average size bass in Illinois. And maybe two and a quarter, you know, it's not that big. And then you look at the average size in Texas, Alabama, Florida, you know, it's like 4.1, 3.9, you know? It's almost double the size of our bass. And I'm sure your guys is in that big, you know, Midwest outdoors, right? We're talking to the Midwest crowd for the most part. It's, we don't have the growing season that they do in the South. So what do we look for? So these ponds are protected, right? You don't have a whole lot of people taking fish out of them. And unfortunately, sometimes that can make a pond stunted and that you'll find those lakes and that's a bunch of little 12, 10 inch cookie cutters. But the ones that don't have too many fish in them, they don't have any other predators in them, right? right? So they can keep getting bigger. They have tons of usually little bluegill and little bullhead, little crappie in there. Them bass just keep feeding and feeding. They got insects, they got birds, they've got, you know, a little bit of everything. And I don't blame you boys, right? We don't condone trespassing either. But to tell you that it wasn't half of the time spent on the water in my life would be a lie. Um, you know, you guys specialize in golf course ponds. When I was your age, I, go, I specialized in cemetery ponds. Oh, we've done too. We've done some of that. Oh my God. Boy, do I, for, I forgot about the cemetery ponds. That, that really rings a That's bell. That's a thing. Yeah. That's a thing. It just, it just God's <laughs> gracing those bass with some extra yeah, size. God is seriously like, you know what? All of the Sankos are sacred that go into those <laughs> ponds. I swear, bro. I swear. There's like the, the little eerie mist over the pond in the cemetery yes. at night. Yes. Cast my glide bait in there. Bing! 
giant every time. Well, hey, I just wanted to bring these two on because I've been watching their content for the last year. They make some incredible content. Um, if they want to find you guys and find what they what you're doing, how, where do they find your content? So. Uh, me and Luke both post on uh, Instagram, right, right. Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Again, Vince Fishing. You can find me at Fishing with Jaeger, which is Y A G E R. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank you guys for coming by. Of course, man. Have a good day. Enjoy ICAST, and let's get together and catch some big bass. All right. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm about. All right. Guys, we're going to jump to a quick commercial break, and we're going to be right back with our next guest. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at mwomag.com. That's mwomag.com. All right, everyone, we are back, and hey, we are with my friends of ICAST. That's right. When you are in, when you are in a town with all these fishermen, you're gonna run into some, and uh, we all had the pleasure of being at the same hotel this week, so, you know, whether it's the morning or at the end of the day, we kind of recapped ICAST, and I said, hey, it'd be fun to talk about what we are talking about right here. So first, we'll start, ladies, with Miss Misty. Um, Miss Missy is not a Midwesterner girl, no. I'm a but Southern girl. Southern girl, but she is here for media content. She's got her own new show coming to the fishing industry just now. And uh, yeah, Missy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Missy Wiseman. I'm with the Pro in the No show where I get on the boats and I bother the pros to death. It's absolute comedy, 100%. We have the best time and I really just love the friendships that I make on my job. Like, I met these uh, th these guys. She didn't know what yeah. word to use there. She I was like, these awful, them. awesome. I wanted to say them, and I was like, one. what's yeah. less country to say <laughs> for the Midwest? Yes. Like, yes. y'all, I met y'all at, at my hotel, and we all just immediately clicked, and we've just been encouraging each other and, you know, pushing each other up, and that's really what it is about for me. It's just, you know, Inspi inspiration, being an inspiration, and giving the most support that you can to help anyone get into fishing and just have the best time because that's, for me, that's what it is. Fishing is just the best time. You've been a part of, you know, making sure more women get involved. We just had Anastasia. Absolutely, right? great friend of mine. She's the best. Absolutely, and I think because it is growing so well and there's more female faces, you know, I want to thank you, you know, for doing what you guys are doing. And, um, thank you so much. And bringing some comedy, because, you know, I, although we're not as funny on this podcast, guys, I promise you, I'm a pretty funny guy. So he like, is funny. I like when there's some comedy. <laughs> I like when there's some comedy in fishing. And when that becomes more of the norm to the industry, then maybe I can cut loose a little bit more yes, here. There's been a little, little negativity in bass fishing this year, here and there. Everybody knows about it if you're in bass fishing, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm bringing the pro in the no show. It's a lighthearted comedy that anyone can watch, children can watch, anyone can watch. And you can learn some valuable tips from uh, Bassmaster Elite pros, MLF pros, any of the pros. We're also, Anastasia is going to be on the pro in the no show. She's bringing her funny pants. So it's just like, if you want to bring your funny pants, I'll jump on your boat and we'll go through it and we'll learn the most, do the most. She'll even find out what snacks you're keeping in your boat. So, hey, if you have a banana that's two weeks old, clean that out before you get on air with Ant. All right. No bananas on your boat anyway. No bananas on the boat. No bananas. I was waiting that's for them thing. to catch that one. That's a thing. I was like, if the banana's on the boat, I'm getting off. I already know. I'll do it all day. I'm not superstitious. I'll jack on them with a banana in my hand. So funny. Mark Daniels Jr., 
he has hammy melon on his boat. And I'm like, he's like, you never heard of that? I'm like, uh, no one ever heard what of hammy melon. What the heck is a hammy melon? He's like, you don't sleep on the Asian market. <laughs> oh, well, I'm trying, sorry. I, I like sushi. And then we have Brandon here, and Brandon um, is the owner and creator of Something's Fishy. And this little bottle, there's a lot that goes into this little bottle. Um, it is a sanitizer, deodorant. We'll let Brandon talk a little bit more about it, but guys, I have been touching slop and catfish, bass, salmon. I've been, I've been messing with fish my whole life. There's barely any soaps even on the market that take that smell away from you. This product right here, not only does it take the smell away, but it also really cleans your hand. Brandon, how do you come up with this? And, you know, why is it so great? You know, uh, honestly, I came up with this uh, from a dream. Yep. I, I was, uh, during COVID, I had to shut down my travel agency, and the only thing that opened was uh, uh, sport fishing. And since I'm out in California, that's all we're doing is just chilling out the beach. So I said, hey, let's hop on a boat. And, you know, they were only letting, you know, limited loads on, so that's even better. Yep. You got space and room. And, um, I, you know, I haven't fished since I was a kid. And, and the one thing I was like, oh, you know what? I've always been around water. I've been a scuba instructor most of my life, traveled the world. And I wish I would have had this on all of that. But yeah. while I was out fishing, I was like, oh man, my hands stink. That's I why I don't, that. that's why I gave up fishing for diving. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I still get to see the fish either way. Right. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I, I came up with it for that. And then, you know, I thought it was just a problem that I had. I didn't realize that everyone had an issue fish with it. Fish do smell. Of course they everyone. do. But There's nothing I didn't, worse. But I don't eat any seafood. Sure. So I figured that, you know, that's just commonality for fishermen. To, they like don't it. care. I so I, um, I just wanted a boat burger and a beer on the boat that tastes like a beer and a burger. I didn't want a squid burger and an anchovy beer. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I, I came up with this and uh, had a dream about it. And I just kind of followed the, followed the, the, the breadcrumbs, if you will. And uh, the universe put the right people in my path to be able to come up with a finalized uh, product. It's all natural, no alcohol. Um, it's a multi-purpose deodorizer, antimicrobial spray. I use it on everything, not just for fishing. I spray my hats, my boots, my shoes. I'll even use it as deodorant. Um, cats, dogs, diesel, gas, oils, WD-40, literally everything. everything. And But the problem is when I say everything, people go, well, what about this? And what about that? And what about this? And what about that? And I'm like, everything. everything. Yeah. I, I, I tell oh, yeah. people, carpet, live wells. right? I try to live tell Live well smell, yeah, that's a good I have, good, that's I have a, a lot thought. of people that use it for live wells. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I and coolers. I tell, right, it, yeah. I have people that use it for coolers. I have it, like I have, uh, uh, you know, diesel, diesel mechanics use it. I got uh, contractors, plumbers. I got, you know, boat dealers, um, car dealerships. Like literally everyone uses this stuff. Awesome. I put it in my hair today for humidity. I really did. Go. And it did, it did work. I was like, okay, okay. I use this on my bots. I use this on my hands because no one wants to drink water that smells like fish. Yeah. And I use it on my hands. <laughs> Yeah, so get your bottle of the day, somethingsfishy.net. Follow us on Instagram, somethingsfishy2020. Awesome. Well, guys, this is just a small selection, but powerful, of what he is here at ICAST. There are vendors from Japan, China, you know, Australia, and there's companies from the Midwest, the West Coast to the East Coast, and all different friends. So. Guys, follow them, support their products. We've seen this before on the product review. Again, I truly believe it's a great product. Um, guys, thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Appreciate you. All right, everyone, we are back, and we are joined now by Anastasia Patterson. Anastasia is the mastermind behind the iCast, social media, part of making a lot of this happen. You know, the Super Tuesday we had super, uh, super amount of fun at. Um, and I don't know exactly all the things she does, but that's why we have her seated right here. And we're gonna talk about how this show went and uh, what there is to look forward to if you have never been here at iCast. Anastasia, how are you? Awesome, I am great. Yeah. Quite literally exhausted, about to hit the floor. Yeah. I am one yeah. of four people who are influencers at iCast show. Um, 
This is my favorite. This actually is my favorite show, probably, yep. as far as the entire sport fishing industry. Yep. Um, there's everything you could possibly ever want to see. So I am everywhere and nowhere on this floor at all times because if you know me, my phone is probably going to die or my Mine's batteries are dead. Mine's already dead. <laughs> my brain battery is dead as also. Yep. And um, I don't know. We're just really blessed to be here at the show again, blessed to get to be one of the influencers. It takes a village, and iCast shows that. And um, thankfully, this community, not just of our friends, but of our colleagues, has um, given us a huge area to kind of grow, right? What, you know, it's one week, right? It, it's, I always say weekend, but it's not even a weekend, right? It, it's middle of the week so that all of our anglers and outdoorsmen can go enjoy their weekend and, and compete in tournaments or whatever they have to go do. But what goes into this, you know? Is it is it a week, is it a month? It's probably a year, huh? Oh, so like they're already planning for ICAST next year, yeah. three months ago, like yeah. Yeah. probably even before then. Um, it's a never ending cycle of preparation, mm -hmm. but really that's what fishing is, right? Since before we go out to fish, we have to be prepared. Before I go to the store, I have to know what I'm going to do, what I'm going to target. Yeah. Um, so it's really one big puzzle piece that you're forever holding on to. Yeah, yeah. Let's unwind for a second, right? You're, we're, we're all exhausted, we are. The feet, I don't know about your feet. Woo! <laughs> Any shoe sponsor or um, foot massage sponsor, you know, come through right now. You guys can make a killing here, actually. Honestly, if there were someone selling, you can't sell here, but if there was someone who had shoes that were gonna be for sale, or they were trying to break into this industry with shoes, and they were just passing out free shoes. I know that's really expensive, but a comfortable, cushiony floor on my foot, um, maybe even the, a massage on the foot or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some gel, some gel inserts, you know? And a little bit of prayer. <laughs> if you could sprinkle all that into a pair of shoes, I for sure would be interested. For sure, for sure. What was your favorite part so far of this show this year? Wow, so. I did a lot of stuff at this show. Um, I, I always enjoy the iCast Cup. I think that's one of my favorite things. It, it's before the show. It gets the excitement going for the show. The, the Lunkers and Bunkers um, golf tournament this year. The State of the Industry Breakfast, though, I think was my favorite thing. So it was the guy, Sebastian Terry, from um, One to 100 Things. I think that's the name of the book. But basically um, inspiring us with what's that bucket list thing you want to do before you die. So I've been asking people all over the show. I think they want to do, I got to ask you after this, something you would like to achieve or do in the fishing industry before you die. And I think that's a constant thing for all of us. You know, we have goals or we wouldn't be here. Um, but for me, I, I know you know this, I want to see um, more women. I want to see more products for women that aren't just, you know, sparkly and pink, which I love that, but that's not for everybody or for every woman. And I also just want to see generations to come um, get heavily involved in the fishing, to love fishing, and um, not just for bass fishing, but for all freshwater fishing, for all saltwater fishing, and even for flat fishing. Yeah, I mean, I'll say this. If you are a woman and you're not fishing, we invite you now. Me. I would love to teach you. Yes, there are so many organizations and groups across the country. Uh, some are national, some are regional, some are state-based. You can get involved. Um, newsflash, most men out here, we do want to take a young lady fishing. Um, and if a guy's probably says, a great first date option honestly if a, if a guy says girls can't fish they're morons hot take there you go um no but I, it's true you know i am a high school coach and i never saw girls on almost any team my first few years now you know recently last year we had an all-girls team win the national championship um i have a couple young ladies on my team that i coach back at home and it Fishing is that beautiful. That is why I am addicted to the sport. Uh, the tug is the drug, right? But I'm addicted to the sport because anyone can do it. Male, female, white, black, blue, purple, don't matter. Um, old or very old, young. young. <laughs> Handicapped or, or well-bodied. You know, um, you can do it for money or you can do it and spend $100,000 of your own money every year, you know? For pleasure, for business, for just flat out fun. Yep. Fishing is something for everyone. And I, I also 
another thing that I did this week, yep. I got an Uber. I live in a small town. We don't have Uber. I think you know that. And um, Was that your first Uber? No, no, not my first. Oh, I've been okay. in hundreds of probably thousands of Ubers. But this Uber, I got in, and he was like, hey, what are you here for? I'm like, a fishing show. And he said, I haven't been fishing since I was a kid, but I have the fondest memories of going fishing. And whenever we got back to the hotel, I was like, hey, drive around the back. My boat's back there. I'm going to give you some stuff so you can go fishing. So I got to pay it forward to someone who hadn't been fishing in a long time this week. Um, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know if he's actually going to go fishing, but just the thought of the seed being planted for him to want to go fishing yeah. again um, was pretty awesome. And it, he was getting emotional telling me about his fishing uh, journeys that he had gone on with his father before coming to Florida. And now he's surrounded by a ton of places to go fishing. So, Well, it's absolutely true. And, you know, I broke into tears last night and... I, that wasn't that wasn't on the list of things to do while we were at ICAST, but they were the happiest tears ever. Um, when I was in third grade, I wrote. They said, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And we we had to draw it, right? And I drew myself on the Bassmaster Classic stage, okay. And although we're not at the Classic, one day still on the list, you know, we'll fish some opens eventually to qualify, hopefully, but. I host a television show and podcast, obviously here, for a company that I watched since third grade. You know, the people I idolized, they were starting at my age now, are now, you know, towards the later end of their career, and I get to work alongside of them, and I watched them for over 20 years. To think about that, you know, is, um, it's something, and it's, it's a childhood dream come true, and, the point of why I put any effort into making this podcast for you guys and I can speak for I think a lot of people in this building is because this is what I'm addicted to this is my passion it is my love and to be in a roof under one roof of other like-minded people who are supporting my dream because they know I want to support their dream we are all dreaming with our eyes wide open. It is an insane thing. Exactly how your story, I was a little girl at a Bassmaster weigh-in. I told my daddy, I want to be on that stage one day. Now, mind you, I did have other dreams and goals that I still do. Um, but the classic something I'm after, but the Elite Series, I'm really hungry for. So. Well, hey, Anastasia, I want to thank you for everything you do here. Thanks for making my life a little easier. Thanks for coming on. And always look forward to running into the future. And uh, do we have the dates of ICAST 2025 yet? They might be out there. I'm not 100% sure because I have um, ICAST show depression already because we haven't left. So my brain's not working properly. But head up, hammer down, and we will see you at ICAST 2025. And Anastasia, if someone wants to see what you're doing out there or follow your content, where do they find you? Okay, so the best place is probably Instagram or Facebook at Anastasia Patterson underscore fishing um, or on TikTok at Anna Liz Pat. And then also I do plan to launch a YouTube at some point, but um, if you know me, I'm kind of awkward, so I don't know when that point is going to be. <laughs> Anastasia, love it. Thank you for your Thank time. You so Absolutely. Thanks for all you do for iCast. If you have one thing to say to the people that haven't been at iCast, that could be, what's one reason why they should be here? I mean, there's a thousand reasons why they should be here, um, but iCast is the show to be at. If you're not at any show all year long, this is the place to be. Whether you're a buyer, you're a wholesaler, you're a retailer, you're a product designer, you're a boat designer, anything that has to do with sport fishing, this is where it lives, this is where it breeds, this is where it's born, so be here. Very good. Anastasia Patterson, everyone. Anastasia, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Guys, we're gonna take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. Your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com.
All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed sitting down and talking to some of the industry professionals as much as I did. But it wouldn't be iCast if we didn't show you guys some of the goodies that we got to see on the show floor. So let's join a couple of the pros and see what's new this year at 2024 iCast. This is Chris Bishop. We're here at iCast 2024 in the Ozuri booth. And I want to introduce a brand new bait that's debuting for us here at the show, and that's the 3DRX Heavy Flat Minnow. This is a really unique bait that's gonna be available in three sizes, a 40, a 60, and an 80 millimeter. The first thing you notice is extremely flat sides. So this has a really tight wiggle action, great cold water bait. Um, but what we really made it for was fishing in high current uh, areas. So if you're looking at river fisheries where you really have a strong current, I mean, this thing will run in pretty much whitewater rapids. It, it goes against the current with a really tight action, great trout bait. But what we noticed when we were developing it is it's a great front facing sonar bait, especially in the larger size for bass fishing. It sinks fast and when it sinks, it has a side to side dying bait fish wobble. And then you can bring it up with that tight action and let it sink back down. So whether you're open water fishing, you know, with front facing sonar and live scope, or whether you're fishing for trout in streams, the 3D RX heavy flat minnow will be a great bait to add to your arsenal. Check it out, available from Yozuri starting this fall. Hey guys, Adam from Minn Kota. We're at ICAST 2024, and we're talking to Midwest Outdoors about Minn Kota's 90th year anniversary. That's right, 1934, OG Schmidt invented the first trolling motor, and it's all been uphill from there. So you can see behind me, we have our entire timeline of innovation. There's a lot of firsts that Minn Kota has had over the past 90 years. You can come check them out at ICAST here in Orlando. Otherwise, behind us, um, we also have some historical trolling motors that we're really, really proud of, some of our innovations throughout the ages. This is going on for our entire year 2024 so we're talking about our 90th year anniversary we're having all types of different things for our consumers trying to give back to our community obviously we've had a lot of trolling motors over the years there's a lot of you guys at home who have been coated trolling motors and we want to make sure that you guys know how much we appreciate you how much we love you and how much we're happy to have you part of the Minkota family so thank you for 90 years of innovation and thank you for 90 years of Minkota. Hi I'm Shaw Grigsby and I got to tell you something Lou's came out with a kind of new but really remodeled custom pro reel has been out i love them i've got quite a few of them that i use every day in my tournament fishing but we have a new custom pro remodeled and what this has it's i mean it's all really good it's just an incredible reel but what makes it special is the actual cast control system so it's called a um, paramag itb now what that is is it inertia transfer uh, of your magnet. So it's a magnetic deal, very simple. You can see right here, real simple to adjust from the outside. It also doesn't get moved while you're fishing, which is nice, but it makes it where you can almost dump this spool. So you fill it up and when your cast is so nice and smooth and it's pretty revolutionary. I mean, it's not just normal old cast control, it's state of the art unbelievable stuff so you can just make this long cast and have way fewer backlashes than you ever had in your lifetime and that's what i like about this reel so it's the new cast system and we have it on this brand new custom pro of course i love the color everything else is perfect about it you know with the gears and the and the handle the handles are, are just right for everything that you do so yeah i love this reel it's cool one of my favorites custom pro not new, but remodeled. Hey, what's up Midwest Outdoors? This is John Stokes with Bait Pop. Let me show you something really cool you can use to maximize your baits. It's called Bait Pop, okay? And so it adds scent and taste to catch more fish with the original fish formula, the OG of scents. You can customize your baits with it. So I'll show you something Jacob Wheeler helped us design. So this is a freeloader, but it does not have chartreuse flake on it out of the bag. All he did was take the chartreuse bait pop and put it on there so you can customize your baits with it. And all the bait pops make your baits pop on live sonar so you can see your line and baits a whole lot better. Now something really cool with this stuff is it has sparkle scales in it which are trademarked and so when your bait's moving through the water, the scales come off replicating a bait fish and it triggers more strikes. So this stuff, if you're not using it, you're behind the eight ball. 
Hey Midwest Outdoor viewers, Chris Martin here at the Daiwa booth ICAST 2024. We're looking at the new Kage Bass Rod Series. This is a rod series that is that dealer driven design for those small business dealers, those independent dealers. So really cool technology going in here. We're changing up the blank to an SVF Nano Plus. Super lightweight, sensitive graphite construction rods. Even better is the design on the air sensor reel seat. The air sensor reel seat it enables sensitivity from the tip of the rod transferring all the way down into the palm of your hand. Premium cork reel seats, just phenomenal, phenomenal rod with the Fuji guides going all the way up. Find more information about them at Daiwa.us. Hey guys, you're at iCast. I'm Aaron in the Berkeley booth here. I want to show you a brand new bait called the Jack. The Jack is available in three sizes, a six, a seven, and an eight, ranging from half ounce to one ounce. This bait is designed for walleye in the spring into early summer when they're out in those heavy flats, pre-spawn, getting ready to slide up. You can rip this bait way out there. It's super heavy. It's gonna fall down quick. It's got a nice knife play back design that allows it to engage super quick. It's got a really heavy rattle. It's super loud with the tungsten BBs and the heavy weighted front. Nice flat bottom. It's gonna allow it to glide out. Like I said, it's available in six, three sizes, a six, a seven, and an eight and 22 phenomenal colors that are some of the best colors that I've seen Berkeley produce in a hard bait. Beautiful high-end cosmetics with all the colors ranging from super clears to super brights to naturals. Got everything to uh, target those walleyes this coming fall and spring. All right, welcome to iCast, everyone. We are here at the Lawrence booth going over the Eagle Eye product. So this is a new addition to the Eagle line. So the Eagle Eye product is gonna be an all-in-one solution for anglers. This is a live sonar MFD unit all-in-one. So we get our transducer, we get our actual fish finder, chart plotter, everything in one go for the $9.99 price point. So we can see on the screen here, we do have 2D chirp sonar. We have downscan with fish reveal. And with our transducer, it gives us live imaging forward and down. We don't actually need to move that transducer also. So we don't have to go from a forward or down position. There is no black box, no intimidating installation with this. In the past, we've had to spend thousands of dollars. We've had to install boxes, ethernet cords, wake up the box with power. All we need to do is plug our transducer in, give it 12 volts, and we are up and live and running. Our charting is gonna include US inland. So that's three to five foot contours, all freshwater lakes. We do have a CMAP variant, so if you're looking for coastal, one-foot contours, Canadian market, we can do that as well. And the elements found within the active target, too, and Eagle Eye are going to be identical. So you're not degrading any of your performance. We're able to see super far out, great clarity, and we do have an IPS screen within the unit. So if I'm wearing my polarized sunglasses, the screen's super bright. We're not going to actually lose any of that viewing ability. And again, $9.99 price point, no modules none of the extra black boxes, all-in-one solution for your anglers. All right, guys, we're here in the Abu Garcia booth, and we got the new spinning reel. It's the Abu Garcia Max Elite. And so if you're looking for an entry-level spinning reel into the Revo lineup of reels, this is the one for you. Coming in at $99, this thing has a lot of features that the Revo lineup already had. So it's a carbon fiber, or it's a carbon, uh, frame, so it's going to be super light. It's carbon uh, handle here as well. It's got the carbon matrix drag system. It's got 10 bearings, and it's going to come in sizes from 2,000 all the way up to 4,000. It's super lightweight and super affordable. So you guys got to check out this new Abu Garcia Max Elite reel. Hey guys, Easter Filegill here at the Strike King booth. Here I got the final copy swim bait. It's a new harness style swim bait by Strike King. It comes in a six inch and also a 4.75 inch size. And you know, being from Midwest up in Minnesota, a big swim bait is a technique we really don't think about, but it truly is one of the best ways to get a big bite all around the country, even in Minnesota. So be sure not to overlook this bait up in the Midwest. And yeah, it's got a harness style and it's also got an eyelet on the top here. You can actually take this whole thing off and switch it onto the top if you're around wood or that sort of thing. Yeah, all these products I've shown you today here at striking you can find us striking.com available this fall be sure to check it out what's up midwest outdoors we are here at iCash. we have four new shapes at the crush city booth and dc on one hey you got to pick the first one top three things you like about what's your favorite bait which one do you year? think i'm gonna I, pick. I already know which one you're gonna pick don't even hey there's half hey, six hundred thousand dollars has been won on this bait before we launched it 600 grand That's right here lot. what is that uh so this is the mooch minnow okay and I'm a little fond of this because I did win Red Crest on this bait. 
And uh, it's a little spotted bass snack, largemouth snack. I, w I want Toledo Bend on it too. Yeah, you, you, man, did you win I don't, Did you win Bill Hall? I, I, I did, I did. I, I got in on, I finally got in on it later on. But oh yeah, right. I had to get in on it, man. Uh, he was winning all this money. I was like, man, come on, let my, me move in a little bit. My three things three that things. I love about, three quick things. Um, I love that it's TPE. I love that. I can get a lot of bites really fast. We're uh, trying to catch, catch them as quick as we can. So yep. I ain't got to replace my baits. I can catch a ton of fish on this one bait. That's one thing. I love the little small tab, the little subtleness. You know, with a lot of pressure nowadays, I like more subtle things. I mean, these fish are starting to catch on. Very, very subtle. Another thing, um, I would say the size. It perfectly imitates a thread fin shad. And you can take that all over the country and just get bites. That's my three, three favorite things. Yeah, I mean, it's a great minnow profile. I'm gonna say high frequency on the tail. You, you knocked it on, out of the park on that. So I'm gonna pick my favorite, and we're gonna roll from there. All right, Okay. my favorite's probably, since you picked that guy, is definitely gonna be the hedgehog. The hedgehog, to me, it has a really consistent kicking action. All right, I can also, if I wanna keep it completely ready to roll, I got him with a lot of different appendages. The side appendages have secondary action. Similar to the Bronco buggy, he's got a little bit more. And the biggest thing for me when we were designing this bait was consistent action in the tails. Like when you go to pitch a bait on an eight ounce or, or it's weightless on a Carolina rig, you gotta make sure every time you're pulling that thing, it's consistently kicking. And that is exactly what we did with that. And just being able to like change it up. Like lizard profiles are great baits to catch fish. This bait's sort of that perfect profile overall. Good colors. I mean, it's just a fish catcher. So that's 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 mine right now. All right, you got you got to pick that. We have showed y'all our favorites so far, but I'm not done. No, we've still got two more, and this is a tough pick because I have called them and you have called them on both of these. I already know. I'm picking the janitor. All right, so this bait, um, rewind Chowan River. Yep. Chowan. This this bait was. Oh, I'm gonna grab some. Oh, really really cool. So um, I've called them on this. I love throwing a drop shot. Perfect profile. Um, I'm back. He has a package right here. Well, I got a package, but this is a methylate. I was just gonna talk about We're, we're gonna talk about that real quick. But this right here is perfect for Nico rigging. You yep. can drop shot it, you can shake your head it. You have to have this on your deck. That's why it's honestly called the janitor. You, you're playing clean up you with it. You can punch it, you can flip it, you can nah, what, well, punch whatever it right. you wanna do. <laughs> whatever you so, wanna do, uh, you wanna then, work it on the top one. It has a certain color there we're so, gonna talk about too. That was one thing, well, the reason behind this, it has a good gliding action and it glides really well. So of course, for my friends out there that love a floating worm bite, you gotta have them fouled. I never realized it was methylate. I always call it methylate. 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 Methylate is M-E-R-T-H-I-O-L-A-T-E. I didn't know that. So that's a new deal. Methylate. Methylate. That's it. I'm still gonna call it. I'm still calling it methylate. Oh, I'm ready. I'm still calling it methylate. All right. So that's a good bait. My pick, of course, last but not least, is going to be the pig stick. This is a stick worm. Of course, not all stick worms are created equal, and the pig stick is awesome for a couple different things. First off. Action is everything. Spent several, several different um, adjustments on this bait to get the action perfect. And when you think of like a, like a, like a pig stick and a stick worm in, in and of itself, you're thinking weightless, you're thinking of that action, all right? I wanted that really consistent action, that bait swaying around on weightless. And weightless, weightless, like fishing a bait weightless now has been more important than ever before, I feel like, pressure, because of pressure. pressure. And, that, and that's been yeah. the key there. In addition to that, it has a little bit more bulk so that way I can see it better on forward fishing sonar. I don't have, a lot of times when I'm throwing something weightless, I need a little bit more bulk there. I can see that bait a lot better. And of course, last but not least, it has a slot right here for that crossover ring. If you guys know what a crossover ring is, so it's just absolute killer on that and be able to be, be, rig that bait up, have it wacky, but also be able to Nico. Skip it on there, it's, bait don't tear, it, none of that. And this is the thing, this is, this is good from coast to coast, north to south, it does not matter, these baits will catch them. It, it, you know, if you're trying to imitate a minnow profile, a perch profile with that, with you know, with the mooch minnow, it does not really it just it, they flat out catch them. You take a small mouth about that. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he will. Actually, I got a little green I, I, I pumpkin goby action. I think I might have caught a couple on him uh, uh, a couple weeks ago on that. 100%. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. All right, this is a new uh, lineup from Crush City, and uh, we're, I'm ready to go take. I'm ready to go fishing right now. Uh, let's go. Let's, 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 let's see y'all later. I'm done. Midwest Outdoors Magazine helps you enjoy the outdoors, giving you the best information on where to go, what to use, and how to use it. With fishing maps marked by the pros, nature notes, in-depth interviews, and much, much more. 
your subscription gets you 10 big issues of the best in fishing, hunting, and the great outdoors. Plus, Midwest Outdoors Digital Edition gives you dozens of extra articles. Sign up now at MWOMag.com. That's MWOMag.com. Well, everyone, that's a wrap on ICAST 2024, and what a week it has been. I hope you enjoyed this show. I hope you enjoyed everyone we sat down and all the things that we saw. And like I said last week, guys, these little Asian baits are making quite the splash. So if you wanna check out any of these baits, including this Q-Bomb from G-Crack, check out everything from ICAST, and we'll see you guys next week tight lines.